AirTag Adventures, iOS ad blockers, and domain name fraud. This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter to keep you up on all the latest from Mac Voices. Watch or listen to Mac Voices straight from your email client. Sign up at macvoices.com slash newsletter and stay up to date. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is the third in a three-part Mac Voices Live conversation. This time, we wrap up a conversation about podcasting statistics, then dive into some AirTag adventures by the panel. We talk about iOS ad blockers and an example of domain name fraud. Let's go back and let the panel do the talking. Guy, I, I've, I don't know about copyright, but I, uh, my personal opinion is that they could not figure out a way to make the whole thing stick enough so that your eyeballs were on Facebook. <laughs> well, that could you be know, too. That, you know, yeah, you're talking no, about an. You're right. I mean, we all we all doom doom scroll, and you know, a video catches your eye, and suddenly it's an hour later. Um, but it's by video. When was the last time you ever got sucked in that way by audio and sat there and looked at it hard? You know, you watch you watch the audio play. No, well, never it was happened. doing the you one nine hundred days. Yeah. Jeff, you you were one to get in. <laughs> I got that one. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Dave was saying that uh, that losing Facebook for him doesn't matter, and uh, and I think that underscores how little Facebook was actually doing for podcasters. Yes. Now, if it was say Spotify that said screw it, we're out of the podcast market. Yeah, that's different. that would be a big blow to podcasters. So you know, lo- losing the little players in the game yeah. that's that's not a big deal um but uh, y- you can bet that we're all paying attention to what the uh, the big names in uh, the podcast aggregator game are doing and but it's you know, really interesting that spotify seems to be struggling at how to make money with podcasts facebook either figured they couldn't or Shoot, Facebook could have figured maybe it's just a flat out distraction and we don't want them on here because, you know, we we're losing eyeballs because they're 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 putting our application in the background and going off and doing something else. So and again, that's pure speculation on my part, but I think it makes makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. In Facebook, real fast, in Facebook, people don't. Audio is terrible on Facebook. Generally. Because everybody doesn't want, you know, that's that's the you know the thing you want you're in a quiet place, you can watch Facebook. The things I say like tap here for audio, nobody hits them unless you really want to, you know, see it. Sometimes I'll accidentally turn on the audio and it pisses me off and that comes on too. But um so well, audio because you hear people like us talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, granted. Uh, I was yeah, I had the audio audio play uh going, I was scrolling, all of a sudden it was gamut yakking about something talking to uh, through me and I'm like <laughs> Mm-hmm. hell with that i'm not doing guy, that anymore guy all oh, you're all oh, you're you you know you said you use the the, the facebook live i mean but that's yeah. all video yes right there's there's no audio to that well obviously well, there's audio to the video, yeah there's audio but, and you know and basically after i'm done with it i'll go back to facebook download the video and edit it in an editor and turn it into an audio podcast with various tools and upload that to all the various places that I upload my stuff to. And, you know, but as a live platform, Facebook has a lot of clout. They've been doing that for a while and it's something that, that they seem to do relatively well. And I hope that that's not something that they drop, but what they have kind of done is they're starting to limit how long you can keep those videos on. And currently, you can only store so many videos permanently where everything else has 30 days before it's off the platform. So I always make sure, like the very next day after I do a live cast, I'll go in and and grab that video because who knows if it's going to be there later. Yeah. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons, I mean, I think it's, that's a really interesting choice you've made, Guy, because we made the choice here a while back to not not bother with Facebook. 
but to go to YouTube because anybody can log on to YouTube. They don't have to be signed in. You can't get into Facebook to watch anything unless you are, unless you, you give them some of your information. Well, YouTube, I, I can, you know, I can do it and nobody right. cares. Re- remember as well, the way that I do that live cast in my car while I'm going to work. <laughs> so I don't know if I could do that on YouTube. Um, oh. I don't know if they have a portal that would work over a cellular connection in that same way that, that Facebook live will with through my phone. So, you know, if, if I can find, I think they do. Well, I maybe I, I actually haven't, to be honest, I haven't looked into it. Um, Facebook live was free. It was easy. You basically just hit a button and you're on. So, you know, that that's kind of what made the decision for me. And they've added tools over over the course of time that they've been offering this that have made it uh, they've made it pretty attractive. Like the, the number of times I've seen videos with people wearing shirts where the letters are backwards. It's like, no, there's there's a tool you can turn that around. And it really bugs the crap out of the OCD in me to see people standing there with with backwards letters on their shirt. When I know there's a tool, it's like, bing, bing, it goes away, but they don't do it. It, it vexes me. It vexes me, Chuck. <laughs> I want to know when Jim's going to do his um, his coding podcast so we can sit and watch him code. Yeah. You're doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. 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 Like pomola the- dishwashing liquid. Uh, You're soaking wait, in it. One other t- I, I topic. I guess people I, do that. Oh, I've ahead, never, Jim. I've never watched one. That doesn't sound very exciting. I don't know TikTok well, coding. Oh <laughs> crap! Oh, I, he he forgot the semicolon. It's going to crash. Yeah. It's going to yeah. yeah. ampersign, ampersign, ampersign. <laughs> oh, hey, the one other thing I wanted to get to. Um, there were a couple other things, but the one I may I specifically wanted to uh, this week in the Mac Voices Slack, there was a lot of. Once again, there was a lot of AirTag chatter, um, and I'm really curious to see, you know, what uh, what you what you all guys were talking about because I was away, and I have to tell you though, I went yep, to an we Apple know, store. Chuck, and, look in your what? bag, <laughs> Jeff. We know where I, you were. I actually went to an Apple store and bought um, an extra set of AirTags and tagged know. all my gear to make sure that I could not leave it, or if I did, it would remind me I'd left it behind. Mm-hmm. On the show floor, um, yeah, I just not know. gotten around to it, and it's like I got I got to do yeah. this. No, no, it's in your I, closet I, on the left. Air tags yeah, are on sale today, so <laughs> I bought some. So next week I'll know something about it. Yeah, I saw that uh, eighty nine dollars for four. Yeah, so yes. I literally I have there coming on Monday, which I don't understand why it takes so long, but yeah, you bought a Jeff, you, Jeff, you had a, a little you had an air tag adventure, didn't you? Oh, I, I suppose you could call it an adventure. Um, I I was at an outdoor gathering with several friends, and uh, and part of our uh, our reason for getting together was to go and see a friend's uh, art installation. So we're all hanging out, and we walk a few blocks to this art installation, check it out, and come back. And um, and so this whole process was like two hours. And all of a sudden my phone starts vibrating and I look at it and it says, hey, there's been this air tag that's not yours around you for a while. And it shows me a map with this nice red dotted line of exactly where I went and uh, and this other air tag had gone, um, you know, showing that that we were together. And, um, and well, I, I, it was not nefarious in any way. It was just one of the other people in the group had an air tag with them. So they ended up getting an alert that there was a an air tag that was not theirs with them because I had one with me. And uh, and of course, same route and everything. It was just the two of us coincidentally having air tags at the same event. But it was cool so- to see the alert and see uh, and see the map showing me uh, where I had been tracked. So you didn't have to set up anything. You didn't have to ask it Mm-mm. to tell you if there was an air tag. It just did it. it. It just gave me an alert on my screen. Just like it's supposed to. Yeah. So there you go. 
maybe there's nothing else to say. I, you know, I just the, well, the air tags. We've, for beat me, it, we've beat it to death. I mean, it's it just continues to be an issue with people to having these rogue tags. But in the case of Jeff, I mean, he was nearby to somebody. I mean, the same thing happened that I've given my example for with my wife. She has my car keys to drive my car, but that, my air tag isn't linked to her account. She's going to, she's getting the, the warnings because it's not registered. So, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be a problem, but Apple has done a, a decent enough job that it's allowing you know, the, the fact that, if, that the air tag is trackable and telling you that you have an air tag with you or nearby to you that is not yours. The air tag doesn't know if this is intended to be there or not. So, exactly. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you can't have it both ways. You can't have it where the air tag works great for you if you're trying to find something or using it to for bad reasons. And right. you can't, you know, there's one or the other. And that's what they're trying to get. Sorry about that. Uh, Lola. Um, so they're just trying to, you know, find that balance. And the last, uh, uh, thing they put on the beta, I guess, made the alert a little bit more noticeable. Is that right. what it was? Yeah. So they made so they they that's the latest thing they tried to do in this is you know they're going to try to protect a potential victim from this thing the best they can until until you know maybe like uh, Jeff B has his wish like the article I read and they'll go away but I don't think Apple wants that and they're going to keep trying to keep them around and I have to say that you know I've, I've put air tags in a bunch of things when I left for the convention center on certain days I would get an alert I wasn't even to down the elevator mm-hmm. um, before I would get an alert saying mm-hmm. you know, this has been left behind um, you know it, it, it was and it's great because you know and even now Actually, I've got to take one of those air tags out because even now there's one of my backpacks that's that I use for for trade shows. And every every day that I leave now my house, I get an alert. You know, you this has been left behind. Yeah, I just set up the geo yeah. fencing for it so when yeah. it's at home, you don't get the alert. But right, you I just do that. I, yeah, I haven't gotten around to it. But but the point, I guess, the point is that you know they 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 work phenomenally well for what they're supposed to to do. Unfortunately, that means they work phenomenally well for people that abuse them too. So, um, just like cars, just like cars, yeah, and <laughs> guns and other things, mm-hmm. and microphones, and dogs, Mike, microphones. <laughs> and God, you should know about about, about that. Ugh. Well, um, uh, what they, can't they put Find My in the microphones? I find them all. <laughs> you do. If your microphone is lost, it's a guy's place. (laughs) Right Right over there. In his bed. Mm. A bed of microphones. That does not sound comfortable at all. (laughs) We we talked about that before you came out. Before you got here. (laughs) Yeah, we 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 already had that vision. Um, one other thing that came up in the in the Mac Voices Slack this week, and and Jeff, I think you were the one of the ones that responded to it. Um, one of our members had asked if anybody was using um, an iOS ad blocker um, to, oh. to serve. And I admit I had given up on ad blockers for iOS because they just always seem to be such a royal pain. But Jeff, you said that uh, you have one that you don't want to surf without, which I was anxious to hear a little more about this. All right, sure. So I'm using one blocker. So it's the number one blocker. And, um, and I put it on my iPhone because websites are so uh, data heavy with uh, with all the ad platforms that that get added into them that uh, surfing on a mobile device on a cellular connection turns into this just like painful process. And uh, and then with all of the pop-up content and slide over and, and other stuff that gets in the way of the browsing experience on my iPhone, uh, it, it, it basically, for me, makes using a web browser on my iPhone, uh, uh, I don't want to say an unusable experience, but a very poor user experience. So I installed one blocker and it works really well, but I have a moral dilemma with this. 
because if I've put an ad blocker on, what that means is that the the content creator, the website creator, th- they are not getting the ad revenue for the uh, for for the ad loading for me, and the way we are paying for content on the internet, unless it's behind a paywall and you're actually handing over a credit card, is by viewing ads. So by blocking ads, in a sense, you are stealing. And hence my moral dilemma. But in this case, when you know when I'm on cellular, even with the 5G connection, I mean, just the experience of having all that ad content interfering with the rest of the interface, and in some cases, actually creating a situation where you can't clear a popover because you need to be able to physically click on something with a mouse and tapping isn't an option. You know, you have to wait for like a hover state, which you can't get on a mobile device. Um, it it drove me to installing uh, one blocker and it works really well. So I can control what types of content are not... Um, uh, getting passed through to me and they, they have like a subscription service where you can add in a a lot more content. You can also go in and whitelist sites. So, you know, like if there, if there are specific sites, like, uh, you know, like you have your favorite Apple news site that you go to, um, you can whitelist that. And then all the ad content from that will come through. So you're not stealing from that website. And uh, then all the other sites that you might be hitting along the way where you just you just need to be able to do your thing without having all of the, the ad content getting in the way or eating up your bandwidth or slowing down the, the site loading. There you go. Use an ad blocker. And it's amazing how much faster websites load with, uh, with an ad blocker in place on mobile. And Jeff, getting you... Oh. Well, David, hang on one second, then I'll get to you. But Jeff, when when I if you put the ad blocker on, so what do you just get in place of ads? You just get blank, you get blank nothing. spaces. Just nothing. I mean, nothing occasionally there there'll be a web page where there's like this big white gap, and 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 that'll be because of the way the site was coded. You know, it's forcing like a frame or something, and like an iframe, which is kind of crazy. People would still do that, but the point. The point being, sure, there are some websites where they'll just be like this blank space where you can tell there was supposed to be something there, but it's not. Um, but most of the time, there's, there's like no indication that the the ads are missing, except that you're not seeing them. Okay. David, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. Um, I was going to say, you are getting some benefits with, it, or with, the, with the free version, because obviously, like you said, there's a subscription. Um, and... Uh, are you are you seeing that it is g- good with it just being uh, the free version? Yeah, I um, I tried the subscription version for a little bit, and I realized I actually wasn't using the features of okay. the of the paid version, which honestly is more on me than on one blocker because everything was already working great for me, and so I just didn't get around to setting up anything else that you get with the subscription version. So I eventually stopped paying for it because I realized, yeah. you know, if I've gone like six months paying for this and I haven't bothered to set anything up, I'm not going to. Yep. Yeah. Looks yeah. like it's available on the Mac as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I do not have any- an ad blocker installed on my Mac. Okay. Does anybody else use ad blockers for iOS or for Mac for that matter? Just the one that's built into Safari. Oh, I I do. Yeah, I have a ad block. I there's like two versions of ad block out there, and I'm not sure which one I'm using um, or both. I think they both pop up when I open up browsers, um, which is double. Um, but yeah, so I had it on Safari. So basically, it's on Safari, uh, Firefox um chrome and um edge and whenever i go to a new browser or new computer it installs those and they work well Hmm. Uh, definitely work i mean there are i don't i'm trying to think there's a forum i go to um like car forums and it's filled with ads and for that page alone it's worth it because i could you know (laughs) 
get through it without seeing uh, all that. So they're free. They work. I, I've never had a problem. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I, I so badly want to tell you because uh, while I was gone, I went to a website and I was I was going through the hotel's Wi-Fi, but I had my VPN on. And it said, you know, that we see that you're using um, a, a VPN. And, you know, we really don't appreciate that. And so, you know, turn off your VPN and then come to our site. And uh, and I will never go back to a nope. site that does yeah. that. Exactly. Yep. And, 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 I, and, 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 but, you know, Jeff, the, the interesting thing was, and that's, I can't pull it back. It, um, I wanted to make note of it. And I was kind of so shocked that I, I forgot to write it down, but it was, it was not a fly by night site. Business it, Insider uh, does a lot of that. Banks, I, I think a lot of banks don't like that. They'll block it. And, and and, you, you may be right, Warren, but there wasn't a bank. It was it was a commercial site. Okay, and casinos too, it's to prevent people from trying to gamble in a state they're not allowed to gamble in. So, yeah, like in New, uh, in New Jersey, it's a legal gamble, and I had a computer uh, at the beach house in New Jersey. So from Pennsylvania, just as a test, I VPN into it, and uh, you try to go to the site, uh, the gambling site, and it says we notice you're using a VPN. Uh, uh-uh, not coming in. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. On that topic, and we'll wrap up with this. Um, had a friend contact me recently and asked me to take a look at a notice she received for a domain for her business, um, and it was a bill for a domain for two hundred eighty-six dollars for the domain from a company that she didn't remember ever dealing with. And so I looked it up on who is her domain does not expire until two, 2025. And the bill was not from the registrar mm. complete scam. Yep. And, and I, I had not run into one of these before. I mean, I've, I've seen plenty of them try to, you know, get my domain, but I've never seen just a flat out bill for, Hey, here's one pay, pay up now. And here's a link. So be warned out there if you if you own domains. And the thing is, if you do pay it, it basically transfers the domain to that company as well. Really? In some cases, yeah. Even if the domain is locked? Well, it, it, a lot of people don't go to that kind of go to that kind of trouble. Yeah. Or they so just take they'll, their money and run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At worst you lose the money at, at or at best you lose the money. At worst you lose the money and the domain. And then have to pay to try to get it back. The ISPs, uh, the web hosts have a um, minded, at least a place where if you want to put your domain up for auction, they redirect you to someone, um, uh, another company, and you have an account with them and you can put it up and name a price um, to do it through that. Um, I don't know if that's kind of the same. Um, I thought uh, I put mine up. just for the hell of it. And because like they said, the minimum bid is like ten thousand dollars. Actually, what it does is you put it in and it, I remember you put it in and it gives you a like um an estimate of what it's worth. And they said your Warren's IT uh, Warren's dot IT is what I registered, and I still have it. Uh that's ten thousand dollars. And I'm like, hell yeah, I don't need it. <laughs> that's a, as, as what it's worth. Uh, that was two years ago and I've never heard anything. So, Of course not. Guys, as always, this conversation took turns that I did not expect it to take, but thank you very much. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure that we reached any serious conclusions here tonight, but we certainly had a lot of opinions and we got to do something about pumping more oxygen into Warren's room to make sure he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Warren, are your meds off? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're on. Oh. They're on. Oh. oh. What is that? What was that, Joe? How much CO2 there is in my room? Oh, oh okay. Um, Warren's is probably off the chart. <laughs> <laughs> it, is a, it is a basement. Ah. Uh. So let's go around the room and let folks know where they can find you, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, I'm going to reverse it this time. I want to know if Mr. Guy Searle go first. Guy, where can folks find you? And by the way, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Oh, sure. Not a problem. Um, over there on the likely soon to be owned by Elon Musk Twitter, you can find me as Mac Parrot. 
or VertShark. VertShark.com is the website for all of the odds and the vids. Uh, Guys Daily Drive and my the My Mac podcast are the two podcasts that I do. And uh, if you want to send me an email and say, what the hell is wrong with you, Guy? You can send that to Guy at MyMac.com or podcast at VertShark.com. Excellent. Thank you, Guy. Thank you. Thank you. And since you mentioned Elon, I should say that um, there's been some discussion in the Mac Voices Slack this week. Um, I, I am accepting bids for the show. You know, I have no problem uh, selling the <laughs> show if the price is right. So far, the price has not been anywhere near right. So mm-hmm. we'll be back next Tuesday. <laughs> Jim Ray, where can folks find you? Have you let Elon know that the show is for sale? I'm in talks with Elon's people, yeah. I bet you are. Got to tweet it. Uh, yeah, where you can you find me? Uh, Provue.com, P R O V U E. And on the Tweety thing, uh, at Provue Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for being here. Good to see you. You, you and your CO2 monitor. Mr. Gamut, where can folks find you? And thank you for showing up as always. Chuck, it's always loads of fun. Absolutely fun. Um, okay, you can find me on the Twitter that I think Elon Musk is going to find a clever yet obnoxious way to spin into not actually having to buy without it costing him anything in the process. Um, I'm Jay Gamut there, also Jay Gamut on Instagram and uh, youtube.com slash Jay Gamut for my videos. And here on Tuesdays with you. Uh, Thursdays on the big show and then Thursday evenings because Dave keeps letting me come back on in touch with iOS and then on Fridays on the big show. And of course, Brian Chaffin and I have teamed up for the context machine and um, uh, our most recent show, which I think is out. I, I've been so busy. I haven't bothered to check. I should do that. Uh, we actually talk about Elon Musk and Twitter. Mm. I don't didn't see it on my feet. I don't think, out. but I'll look. Is it? I'll look forward to that. Oh well, that Dave, thank thanks for being there and uh, and doing my job for me and seeing if my show is live. <laughs> <laughs> I just all I did is go on pocket cast, look at my feet. <laughs> That's what we all do here. Is we yeah. keep watch each other's backs. Warren Scar, thank you for uh, thank you for showing up as well. Um, where can folks find you? Um, I will be. In my oxygen depleted basement, um, I'm at W Sklar on Twitter, from what I remember, and W Sklar on Facebook. But for ten thousand dollars, I will sell you those handles if you um, if you want them. Um, Thursdays, uh, the show with Dave uh, in touch with iOS. I won't be on this thursday because i am going to uh be in between here on the beach but i hope it's a good show and uh as always it was great Uh, i like to argue but i just love you all i just want to tell you i love you all (laughs) i'm I'm gonna let you finish Yeah, Warren, I'm thinking about buying one of your uh, social handles so I can start tweeting it as if I'm you and it'll be stuff like, uh, like I run around wearing poopy pants. It, it, it'll be great. People are going to love it. What's your offer? I have $10. All right. Uh, we'll talk. We'll talk. Sweet. <laughs> I, I'm willing to go up to 12. Oh, I'm not supposed to. Art, uh, uh, I did it wrong. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Jeff, well. if you need if you need financial backing for this venture, let yeah. me know. We'll work out something with, with uh, this, these massive yes. offers I'm getting. I, I have arranged financial backing. I will be the richest man with the worst reputation online, and I'll be happy. With that. <laughs> Actually, no. I'm pretty no. sure there'll be richer people with with, <laughs> with worse reputations. reputations. Yeah, every day. And every you need to day. step up. Then you need to step up this venture because, uh, you know, step up your game. Make me, you know, it's a contest. Well, you know, one step at a time. We're going we're to start with uh, with jokes 
where people are laughing inappropriately about the possibility of you being incontinent. And uh, and then we'll just we'll work oh, up or down from there. No, no, it'll be down from there. Did you say a continent? Wow. Wow. Incontinent. Yeah. Europe. Oh, eh. Europe. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> oh. I thought you... Okay. David Ginsburg, let's get out of here. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Where can Thank folks you. find you? Thanks Holy for cow. having me. I you could find me at in touch with iOS at intouchwithios.com. Chuck will be on the show this week. And uh you also can find my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Dave G65. And I'm on the Mac show on Fridays in the British Tech Network. And I am on Twitter at Dave G65. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. And I want to thank David, too, once again last week because I was at NAB and the uh, connection was quite rough. I was only here for about five minutes, 10 minutes, and David picked up and and kept the show going. So thank you, David. Really, really appreciate you uh, having my back one more time. Hopefully it'll be a little while now before we have to miss a show. You're welcome. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices Live. We do this Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, whatever time that is, wherever you are. We would love to have you join us in the chat room where you've heard us talking about some of the things our friends have been saying there. Um, We'd love to hear what you have to say about whatever it is we're talking about. So I want you to go away with one thought tonight and go to bed with this thought, and that is Warren loves you. (laughs) I love you. And I won't be mad if you shared a podcast with people and Chuck does not get the hits for it because I love you that much. (laughs) Thank you, Warren. (laughs) Thanks for listening. This is Mac Voices. We'll see you next time. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.